For years, painting has been a fog to me, difficult to see through and impossible to grasp in my hands. And then I took a journey. I learned from the painting masters in a monastery on a mountain in Turkey. And it's there, under their tutelage, I learned a technique which I will share with you today, the slap job. Hi, I'm Rob from The Honest Wargamer. You're gonna love my paints. Getting an army on the tabletop really has two competing factors. It's how long it takes us to produce versus how viable it is as an army. We really want our army to look great. And sometimes this takes a very long time. We also want our army to be good. And unfortunately, sometimes armies only really have a window of time in which they're viable to play. You can, of course, play your army that isn't particularly good. That's fine. But most people, when they're at a tournament, want something that will work well and give them a great opportunity to play good, solid games against their opponents. And so the production meta of producing these armies, as well as obviously wanting your miniatures to look beautiful, compete with each other. And this is a problem which the slap chop will solve. The basics of slap chopping are very easy. Start by undercoating your model with a black primer, then dry brush a light gray over the top. Then on the edges of your model, you dry brush white, then add all those beautiful contrast paints all over your mini to pick out the details. Then you stick it on a spinny plinth and you impress all of your friends. And with all your extra time, it's time to take yourself out for a nice relaxing coffee. <coughs> so to show that tournament gamers really do struggle to get their miniatures on the tabletop for tournaments, I took to Twitter so I could show you some great examples of people preparing their armies the evening before events. This is Will showing me a picture of John painting from his car outside of Warhammer World the morning of the event. Kieran responded with what was a mysterious tweet referencing a picture on a train. And then Mo, the founder of Age of Sigmar and one of the most gorgeous men in all the world, responded. Here you see three war gamers painting and drinking some beers on a train on the way to an event. The fourth member of this picture, however, is not a war gamer and is in fact just watching these people with what is the most amused face I think I've ever seen. I also had a wonderful response from Tyler Russo, who runs the YouTube channel Billion Dollar Clown Farm, which you should subscribe to. Uh, it's currently 2.30 a.m. Still have to paint all of these. It is Thursday night, technically Friday morning now. We're waking up uh, in five, six hours. The model we're going to paint today is King Scraggle from Artisan Guild. To 3D print, it costs about three pounds in English money and resin to print, and I printed it myself. I really like Artisan Guild's designs. They look very much like World of Warcraft models. I'll be painting with Games Workshop's contrast paint. Now, I personally think these are fantastic. I'm not sponsored or in any way get anything free from Games Workshop. In fact, The Honest Wargamer is completely crowdfunded. We have a Patreon, which it would be cool if you could join, and we don't get anything for free off anyone ever. So everything you ever see reviewed by us is independent and free of advertising. There are loads of great other videos about contrast paints and similar paints online. We really like Epic Duck Studios test bench video that you can see here where Mike goes through all of the different contrast paints and how they look on models. And if you don't want to pick up contrast paints and want to try something else, you can go and watch reviews on YouTube, like the one from Goober Town Hobbies, where he looks at army painters speed paints. I think one of the best resources though about paints that you can do over drive brush miniatures is this review from Garfi at the Tale of Painters. It's very comprehensive. It goes into paint ranges that I didn't even know existed. I'll include a link to all of these pieces of content in the video description below. Now you know what the slap chop is, let me show you the technique in action. So the first color we need in our tutorial is gray. This is Vallejo gray. It's a light gray and it works really well. If you wanted to, you could multiple tones of gray, but give it a good shape. Get it on your wet palette. There you go, get loads on. Secure that lid, get ready to slap chop. Introducing my dry brushes. This is my medium dry brush. Yeah, it's quite small, I guess, for a dry brush compared to the other dry brushes. 
I own. I've got quite a hefty dry brush, which I quite like to use. This is my medium dry brush. It's good. It's from Artist Opus. It's fine. You could use it. It's there you go. It's got a really nice tip. Very fluffy. This is one that's just from a makeup. This I stole from my girlfriend's house. Really nice. Also works literally as well. I just wanted people to think I was cool, so I had an artist artist opus one. Here's a larger one, as I talked about. Um, I've also got some of the smaller ones, so you can have a smaller one too. Basically, big one if you're doing a big model, medium one if you're doing a medium model, small one if you're doing a small model. It's really that simple. Just look at a model and say to yourself, I wonder what size it is. And that's what dry brush to use. Getting paint off your dry brush, this is actually really, really important. So get yourself a nice paper towel, put paint all around your brush in the middle and on the sides. So rotate it in the paint. Then you wanna start drying the brush. You wanna get your wets dry and your dries wet. Now it's important not to touch the same area. So there you go, you can see I'm moving it around the paper towel, making it dry. That's right, that's what you want to do. Don't do it over the same area or you get paper inside your brush and eventually that'll get on your model and that's a huge mistake. There you can see it's nice and dry. Now do a thing that lots of painters do is just rub it on your hand so people know you paint stuff. That way when you go to like a Warhammer world or something, people know that you're a cool person. With your paint on your brush, it's time to start dry brushing and it's really just rubbing it up and down a miniature obviously it's nice to start from the top of a miniature sometimes but i pretty much go from wherever i can see i normally don't go for the bottom of the miniature first that feels like a mistake i normally start at the top and i'll work my way down i often when doing this think of like a log flume or a water slide i just think of descending my way down it and just generally trying to avoid all of the murky areas as you would on a water slide the gray dry brush is a really heavy dry brush I'm trying to avoid the recesses so that that can stay dark and already give us that contrast. And then I'm making as much of the area a light gray as possible so that the contrast paint picks that up later. I already know that I'm going to do the edges with the white dry brush, which will come later. So I'm very confident that I don't need to overbrush those areas. So for this next section, I'm intentionally gonna to put too much paint on my brush. And as you can see, as soon as I've applied it, it's almost painted it thickly on. This is a big mistake and you don't wanna do this if possible. But ultimately the slap chop method is really about how you wanna do things. If you accidentally add too much paint, that's fine. It's really organic and it'll add a nice kind of chaotic element to your miniature. As you can see, the chair is completely gray. And those are the areas that are gonna be picked up by the contrast paints later. Here is our big toad, our magical frog, our powerhouse of thought and wisdom. And we are going to make this bad boy gray. It's also a good way to test actually how wet your brush is, to be honest. So I can kind of understand why they do it, but don't tell them that. Now just start to dry brush your mini. Just think about where the light may be coming from, I guess. Just don't basically dry brush under armpits or on his butt. Those are huge mistakes. Don't do in his mouth. Those are dark areas. Think about inside your ear. It's dark. Don't paint there. Don't be mad. The final bit of our miniature is a magic energy ball. This is pretty intense. Now we know that we want this part of the miniature to be very, very light because it's magic. So we're going to also be applying a light color to it later. So we're going to really heavily dry brush this miniature because we want it to be very, very bright. The more you dry brush the miniature, the more the contrast will be bright. So just think about that when you're doing your minis. As you can see, there it is, a light magic ball as light as my conscience when I go to sleep at night. Okay, for the next stage of slap chopping, you must do a white dry brush. I really like Vallejo White. It's the first paint made by Vallejo. It's actually the first paint ever made, 001. And so it's a really good paint to use because why wouldn't you use the number one paint? Also known in other countries as Blanco. Here's our frog, full of magical energy still. He's gray and let's get those edge highlights in. This is where we're really going to pick out the tone of the model. So just look for the edges of the mini. So just look for the raised areas and just do a lighter dry brush. You're not pushing in as hard and you're just trying to gently glide over the tips of the mini. This area is a really good example of where the white really contrasts with the gray and the black at the back. And you can see the tonal shift, which the contrast will pick up when it's applied. So with the white dry brush done, we've effectively created edge highlights all over our mini in minutes, maybe even a minute. You've got so much time to do other things like read my tweets. 
here is our seat causing a little bit of a problem for us because we do want to get the raised areas of the vines but at the same time we'd also like to get the raised areas of the seats so you just got to be a little bit more careful with where we dry brush again just avoid the recesses and just aim for the edges super simple it's the edge highlight all edge highlighted and again just minutes of work super simple super easy just make sure you get those edges it's really really key you can also on the tips of those spines you could just brush up so that you know that the top of those are a little bit lighter than the bottom of those really easy okay the magic energy ball now as we've said we want this to be really bright so we're going to make sure we do lots and lots of white kind of over brushing on the white really in the central piece because again like we've said we want it to be a lot brighter than the rest of the miniature and there you go really easy nice and bright exactly what we want for when we add the paint on let's add some contrast okay first contrast paint we're going to use is Playbearer flesh it's a great color to use on our magical frog especially it's got a nice little tone of yellow mixed in with it now before we actually put any paint on our miniature let's talk about thinning down our contrast paints you really don't have to at all but all of the contrasts kind of have different consistencies and also when you do thin down your paints you are able to get very different effects on your miniature the thinner it is the more translucent it will become which is really nice for building up different effects and styles on your miniature with the same contrast paint so here you can see a more thin down version of the contrast paint being applied to the miniature before we put a more pigmented version on later on in the painting process here you can see the difference between the thin down contrast paint and the unthinned contrast paint and obviously it's a lot more bright and vivid when you don't thin it down but you might want it to be pale so you could have it thinned down and that's the real difference between having thinned and unthinned contrast paints so i've just added some more over the top to build up the saturation and let's carry on and there you go there's our magical frog this frog is mean he's keen and he's partially green the next paint is griff hound orange it's lovely it's bright i use it for lots of different textures including cloth and skin and i'm using it on the toga here a thematic blue next it's our magic color it's one of the thinner contrast paints but it goes on really nice just picking out key little areas which i think work really nice with this color and will tie in with our blue orb at the end of the build process all done in probably under a minute oh boy do i love nasdrag yellow this is the cheap paint this is where you can pretend you're doing non-metallic metals, but really you're just applying a contrast paint. Now, sure, it doesn't look quite as good as actual non-metallic gold, but in the time that we spent on it, I think it looks really fantastic. Just make sure this paint doesn't pull as it sometimes can, and it will look really nice for gold, especially on this Aztec themed slam. Let's use Skeleton Horde to pick out the horns on our miniature. Don't forget if you put quite a lot of this at the tip of a horn as opposed to at the base or thin down the contrast at the base and then drag it towards the top you'll end up with a very horn-like color about four parts vulpus pink to one part blood angels red and that's going to give us a really nice color to put on our lips do some little recess shading in our eyes and bring the color out in our tongue now, after applying the contrast, I thought the color was a bit too vivid. So I just washed my brush off. I added some water to my brush and then I just dragged it over the areas and thinned it and watered it down. And it was much nicer. We're using Agros Dunes to represent leather on our model. And there's a very small amount just around his ear. And then we're going to apply that in under five seconds. Moving on to the chair, we're actually going to use the dry brush to represent stone on our model. And so we've already saved ourselves loads of time and now we're going to be adding some gorgon to fur onto those vines which i think is an amazing color i use this for wood and vines and things like that all the time i find this process so fast and so rewarding because i'm done i put the paint on and i'm done i really won't have to reapproach it unless i want to later skeleton horde is also one of those paints that you'll use a lot really really good for bone apply it nice and thickly it really is a thin paint you really don't need to thin it down at all and it just looks really good over a dry brush argos dunes is what i will be using for the leather on this miniature but i oftentimes use snake bite leather having looked at the final model maybe i would have gone back and done snake bite leather but i'm still really happy with how it turned out 
To show you can also do some effects with the contrast paints, I've just used that Plague Bearer Flesh from earlier, and I've just applied it into some recesses just to create a kind of moss effect. And that's our chair seat palaquin done. Easy peasy, really did not take long at all. Onto our magical glowy orb. As we know, we've already dry brushed this up very, very bright because we know we're going to be putting that athematic blue over it. Applying this really thickly all over the model because I know I'm going to come back to it and do a second layer. Once it's dried, I'm just going to add a second layer into the ball area, avoiding the kind of magical swirls. And then just quickly do the hands in Plague Bearer Flesh again to finish our model off. And we base this magical bad boy and here is the final product. Really not bad for a few hours work and it's so fun and easy to do. Fast, easy, stress-free. Why wouldn't you want to slap chop your miniatures? These techniques can be used on any miniatures from any system. Slap chop is truly universal. Thanks for watching my first ever paint tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to do more in the future if you liked it. So please leave me some comments on things you would like to see. If you are going to paint any miniatures using the techniques you saw, I'd love you to tag me in it or use the hashtag slap chop. Thanks to everyone on the Nurse Wargamer Patreon for helping support me this far in my creation journey.